Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and in this mini Unity tutorial I'm going to show you how you can create a dynamic cursor just like you would expect to see in Fallout 4 or any of the Fallout games for that matter. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click that little bell icon to stay up to date with everything else on the channel including these mini tutorials. And with that in mind, let's get to work. So, all I really need for this is two scripts and one texture. The texture I'm going to use is this one that I've created myself. It's a PNG image with the inside of it just deleted out so it's kind of see-through. And I've also changed it to a sprite up here. When we bring it in by default it is default but we need to have it as sprite 2D and UI because we are dealing with UI and this is what enables us to use an image to have it see-through. Uh, I also have just a quick raycast script, nothing too fancy, it's just a bog standard raycast and we need that to be a static variable because we need to use it for the generic script. So let's get to work with this. We need to add this onto our scene, so game object, UI, we'll go with image and we can drag and drop that onto the image sprite. Let's have it centered, all zeroed out and the default size is going to be one by one, so it is absolutely minuscule. If we press play now, we should be able to see in the center of the scene that we do have that little green dot. So that is the center, that is our general cursor. And what we need to do is make it dynamic. So when we go over <clears throat> an interactable object, for example, this box here, it will expand out just like it does in the game. So that's pretty easy in some respects, but we have to do two animations to make it more dynamic. So let's start with actually selecting the image, right click, rename, we'll have it cursor. Next, let's click on animation and click on create. And let's call this first animation open up because the cursor is going to open up. So we need to press the record button and our first keyframe Let's retype these values here to set our first keyframe. So that will be one by one. And then we need it to open up in about a third of a second. So we're doing this in 60 frames a second. So a third of a second would be the 20th frame because there are three 20s within 60. Math. And we'll expand it to 25 by 25. Hit enter and there we go. That is the first one recorded. So if we were to press play now, we just see that constantly opening up, constantly, never stopping. So let's press the record button and just check that, that animation does do exactly what I said. There we go, you can see that's how it's working. And now we have to do the inverse of that, so close down. So over here where we have open up, where we've just done our original animation, click and then click on new clip. We'll call this close down. And then same again, press record. We set the first keyframe here and we'll have it the other way around. So the first keyframe is going to need to be 25 by 25. So then over a third of a second, so the 20th frame, we need to set this as one by one. And the idea of what we've done here is literally the inverse of everything we've just previously done because we do want it to kind of close down as soon as we move away from looking at the object because what is the point of it just disappearing? That wouldn't be dynamic at all. So press the record button once again and then head back to our projects window. You can see our two animations here. Let's select both of these and change them in the debug menu to legacy because we're gonna use the animation component, not the animator. Head back to normal, wrap mode is gonna be once on both of those. So now on the cursor itself, we need to remove this animator component. So right click, remove component, then add component and add animation. So we can type anim up here and we'll get the animation. Change the size to two and untick play automatically. We want to drag, open up into the animation at the top and here, on element zero and it close down onto element one. And we can just change that back to two. So now we have both of those animations within our control. That means we can use them within a script. So what we'll do now is we'll have some text underneath here to say, uh, no, open container. So we can go game object and UI text. And let's double click on it so we can see it. You can see I'm really zoomed out on the scene here. Uh, I'll have it centered, font size a bit bigger, 20, and let's have it say open K 
container and let's have the color the same as our actual UI. So we can click the little pipette tool here and select a color on screen. So if we select that green there, we can see it. And then let's turn it off. In fact, do you know what? Let's move it down a little bit because it'll get in the way of our cursor. How about there? So now, here comes the script. We're going to attach a script to this object here to enable us for the cursor to work. So right click, create C sharp script. And we'll have this uh, interactable object. Open it up in Visual Studio. And we'll have a couple of different variables here. The first being one that we reference within our player casting script, the Raycast script that I've written. If you don't know how to create a Raycast script, uh, I, if you go through my mini tutorials, you'll be able to find out how to create a Raycast in C Sharp there. It's very simple, it's not too difficult, but all a Raycast really is, is determining how far away objects are from each other. In this case, how far a player is from any object. So what we'll need to do is get rid of void start. We don't need it. We'll keep update for now. And firstly, public float, and we'll have the distance semicolon. The next one is going to be the cursor itself. So public game object, the cursor semicolon. The next one is going to be the text that we display. Public game object, the text semicolon. And remember, coding is always case sensitive. So for void update, what we need to do is make the distance equal to our player casting variable. And if we go onto our player casting script, you'll see here in the inspector panel, the one we need to reference is called distance from target. So we need to go the distance equals distance from, helps if we actually put the script name, doesn't it? I've called it player casting dot distance from target semicolon so every frame will just update how far away we are from any certain object <clears throat> now this script is going to be attached to the object and you have to make sure the object it's attached to has a box collider that is what makes this whole thing work and we need to go void on mouse over uh, doesn't need to be private and what we essentially need to do is check if the distance is below a certain value. So i.e. if we're too far away, none of this will work. If we're within distance, it will work. So if open curly bracket, and it's going to be the distance, and we'll have it as less than or equal to three. So we've got a reasonable distance, but we may change it depends on how far you want to be away. So if our mouse is over it, and the distance is less than three or equal to three, then what we do is the cursor dot get component is breaky brackets animation open close bracket dot play and in brackets and quotes the name of our first animation which was open up semicolon. And at that point, we'll also make our text appear. And we can go the text dot set active true semicolon. And now we need to do basically the inverse of it, and that will be void on mouse exit. So if our mouse moves off and it's below the distance, then we make it all disappear. So after our void on mouse over method, go down void on mouse exit and it doesn't need to be private once again and what we can do is basically the cursor dot get component spiky brackets not componenty <laughs> get component animation open close bracket dot play and in brackets and quotes uh, I think it's closed down wasn't it close down semicolon and the text dot set active false semicolon and save so this is a very basic version of it so we'll test this now and see how the testing reacts to what we've written so we need to attach the interactable object to our actual interactable object which is the box in this case so drag and drop and then let's set those variables 
just here. The cursor is going to be cursor. Text is going to be the text. So by default, the text is off, cursor is on. So let's press play. And we can already see, if we move our mouse around, that the distance is changing every time we move. So let's take a look at this box now. Okay, so what we have here is the fact that it keeps repeating itself. Now, that's not exactly the best thing ever, but you can see at least the one where it's supposed to stop, it goes away, works. So the open up, wrap mode, once doesn't seem to work correctly. So what we need to do is, I think, for now, we can turn off the animation at this point. So after, let's say, the... 0.33 seconds that it takes we can turn it off but then you need to turn it back on there are different ways of doing it and i think the reason this is happening is because the distance is constantly in fact you know what we will use a bool instead why should we use weight let's use a bool so public uh bool and we'll call it has played semicolon so if the distance is less than equals to three and then we'll do another if statement, if, and in brackets, has played equals false, open curly bracket, we will take this line of code, place it in here, so we play the animation, and then we'll make has played equals true, semicolon. So what's happened here is simply... We're checking if we've played our animation. If we haven't, we play it and then say we've played it so it doesn't repeat itself. So obviously the inverse of that, what we have to do is when we finish, we can go has played equals false, semicolon, and save. So we can repeat the whole process. So now let's try this out once more. And hopefully we should have this working. So let's head over to our crate. There we go. Open container. There we go. So you can see that's how the dynamic UI works. Every time we move over something, it expands and then disappears. So guys, you could use that in a whole array of different ways, you know, different things you can do, different methods you can use to play around with. But I like that one a lot because I am a fan of the Fallout games and I've always been fascinated with the way they have their interactable objects. So I thought, you know, I'll share how that's, you know, a good way of how that can be done. So guys, I hope that helps. And please feel free if you have any comments, questions, speak up below. If you want to see more stuff of how everything I do is made, please check out my playlists. And guys, I will see you around in another tutorial. Thank you very much for watching.